Hey guys, and welcome back, after a, a fair bit of time, to end Tom and Volk's Spot of PC. Oh, it's good to be back doing this again, and uh, we felt we had to start strong after being on hiatus for such a long time, so <laughs> what better game than Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, developed by Chris Sawyer Productions. This is a construction and management simulation computer game that simulates amusement park management. Volk, I, I could probably already tell why you chose this, but uh, what exactly are we going to be showing off here? Well, I'm going to show off one of the campaigns um, in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, to be specific. And in order to play this, we are using a custom engine, which is called OpenRCT2, which not only helps you in terms of running this on more modern operating systems, but also comes with a few neat changes here and there. For one thing, you've got a higher resolution, and you've also got functionality to speed up and slow down the game if you want. Uh, you can also add other little things like day and night cycles, which I believe is still in beta, and perhaps what this is most known for is its online multiplayer functionality, <laughs> and yes, it goes exactly how you think it would with people just creating death traps and then comparing it to each other. Oh, oh are we going to get on Mr. Bones' wild ride during this episode? No, no, that joke's been done to death. <laughs> Are you growing crops over there? This is much more advanced. Cause I don't think I've ever sat down and like watched any videos of any roller tycoon game, roller coaster tycoon games, to be specific. Um, not really. Uh, it's more about the trees and where the uh, levels actually take place. Cause each scenario takes place in a different place. So oh, okay. you might be here, which is currently a farmstead, or you might be in an airfield the next time. And when you get to the expansions, like Wacky Worlds and such, you start to get into some really crazy shit, like, um, pretty much a picture-perfect Glastonbury or something similar. <laughs> well, um, like I said about that, the better. But, uh, do you have nostalgia for the Roller Coaster Tycoon games? Did you play them as a wee young Volcamar? Oh, of course I did. This was uh, one of my go-tos, in fact. I played this a hell of a lot, especially the second one where you can get really into the scenery and theming side of things because in Roku's Tycoon 1 it was okay, but there wasn't really a whole lot you could do with the scenery other than raise or lower the land and maybe plop like a couple of funny like scenery and theme pieces here and there, whereas in this game you can kind of create almost your own custom scenery, so like you get walls and other building blocks and you kind of just make your own thing. And I always liked being able to tinker around making stations and all this other cool stuff just to kind of bring the ride closer together. Of course it takes hours upon hours and I'm not going to be doing too much of that here, but I will be showing it off a little bit just to give you a taste of what you can do. I'm already liking how, like, um, it's got a day to night cycle and even the weather is uh, alternating. What separates this from Theme Park, then? Because it seems really similar. Uh, for one thing, just the sheer variety in terms of roller coasters and such you can actually build. It's not just a roller coaster, you have all sorts of different types. You can make wooden roller coasters. You can make like, those little miniature roller coasters that they have in Butlins that kind of just keep going around in a continuous loop a few times. Oh, yeah. uh, you can make corkscrew roller coasters, you can make vertical drop coasters, you can make ones where the seats kind of turn upside down as well. There's just so much variety in terms of the kind of things you can build, and of course it's not just limited to the roller coasters either. You've got different gentle rides, thrill rides, water park features, so you could have like a log flume or a water slide. And apart from that, you've also got the sheer amount of scenery you have to choose from as well. It's all split into different categories, so you've got like your generic stuff, but then you could also get like Wild West themed, Space theme, uh, Orient themed. Like, there's pretty much a theme for basically everything you can think of in this game. Is there a way to, like, import your own custom tile sets by any chance? I am I believe there might well be. I'm pretty sure, like, there's a modding community that has uh, gotten in on that sort of thing, but oh, yeah. I don't have much experience with it myself. Usually I've been content with what's given to you, just because there's so much there. You don't feel compelled to kind of go out and look for something, because usually what you think is missing you can either kind of build yourself using the preset bits of scenery and wall pieces, or it's just there already. If I were, you know, living in this rural, idyllic 
countryside place. Sorry, I lost track of my sentence there. I'd build the roller coaster going through that barn to the north, around the water tower, scarily close to the trees, and then just basically put it back on a loop. That does sound pretty badass. Of course, I didn't really do that there. I think my initial plan when I was going in is I thought, I'm going to make that like a food area. So, so, so it's all sheltered inside the shed and you can grab whatever you want in there. But in the end, I don't think I ever got around to doing it before I actually completed the level. But uh, okay. I made use of the fields and things like that to kind of uh, give things a bit of structure and split them off appropriately. So I'm assuming like during the campaign you're going for efficiency more than craziness, unless the objective calls for it? The objectives can differ in ways that you wouldn't think of at first, so usually you've got a thing where you've got to get a certain amount of guests within a certain amount of time. So in this one we have to get 700 guests by year two. Okay. So um, that's in a eight month cycle I believe, because it starts at March and ends in October for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why that is. Maybe it's something to do with the engine? Who knows. But um, some parks may call for you to build like 10 roller coasters with a certain excitement rating or to have a total park value of uh, so many dollary dues or sometimes it just may ask you to get a really, really high park rating and sustain it. So I'm not seeing any of the roller coasters yet, Mr. Tycoon. When is that going to come in? Oh, it'll be there in a second, don't you worry. I am not neglecting the roller coasters in this one, but I thought, I've got this little area here, I can kind of make it sort of, you know, like one of those uh, local fair type things where you, oh. you get a bunch of people armed in lorries with all these different rides. I wanted to kind of try and capture that feel with like this middle bit here. So that's where like the majority of my gentle and thrill rides are going to go, and then the roller coasters and such are going to be kind of around it. Oh yeah, if you want a bit of a thrill, you have to push past the comfy veneer of like the county fair and boom there the monolithic metal dragons rising up to the sky <laughs> that is very poetic thank you if i don't know where the fuck it came from i'm not usually this eloquent well you have a creative streak in you yet i think you'd be i think you do just fine in a game like this okay Well, I guess, I guess it kind of tells a bit of a story, because you can sort of, like, imagine in your head that it sort of starts off as this little carnival, and then it gets really successful, and you think, ooh, let's put some roller coasters here as well, and just, like, create a huge, lucrative franchise out of it. You just, you just mentioned a story, and for whatever reason, I just thought of, like, a zombie outbreak happening, but everything continues as normal. Like, zombies keep purchasing food, they get on the rides and whatnot, but you have to basically meet the quota while, you know, keeping a sizable audience. Oh, I wonder if there's a mod for that out there somewhere. Ah, uh, there may well be, although I'm pretty sure, like, in Theme Park World, at the very least, there was, like, a, um, whole spoopy Halloween whole theme in one of the levels, if I remember correctly, and I think there were, like, zombies, vampires, and God knows what else in that, so... I suppose that's an option, but whether there's a mod out there for this? Could well be, could well be. I mean, this game is very easy to mod for, for what I've been hearing, since it's all, like, open source and uh, takes place in some very uh, simple C++ code. So, it's something that almost anybody with some kind of uh, coding experience under their belt would actually be able to get into and kind of have a tinker with. I get you, I get you. Oh, we, uh, we'll have to come up with some uh, fun and spooky picks for next month's Spot of PC episodes, because, uh, you know, it's October, and uh, we've got a few spooky playthroughs happening during then. Yeah, I can hear the skeletons rattling around in my wardrobe as it is. They're <laughs> <laughs> just waiting to get out. <laughs> People haven't visited in several years. He was the last guy, and he's dead now. <laughs> oh, dearie me. So everything seems to be going pretty well so far, mate. Do you think it's time to start ratcheting up the excitement yet, or are you still laying the foundations? Um, I think it's about that time. Uh, I'm just setting up the handymen and the mechanics and the entertainers, because obviously you want to make sure you can maintain your park's cleanliness. Oh, yeah. And uh, one thing that is much easier to do here than it is in theme park is setting patrol areas. So rather than kind of having to click paths and such, you have just, like, 4x4 four four blocks that you can kind of tessellate together to make your patrol route. I think, I think both those options have their advantages and disadvantages, but uh, I do like it being on a grid sort of set. Yeah, I can agree with that. I like the isometric view as well, because it gives you kind of more room to kind of rotate the view around and kind of make sure that what you're doing is going to look nice and fancy. In theme park you can kind of do that, if I remember correctly. 
So I'm just trying to think of a good place to place this uh, minecart thing. I was hoping I could get it in there, but it doesn't quite work out. But luckily when you're putting pre-designed coasters down, it kind of shows you the entire thing. So you kind of know where it's what it's going to look like before you actually put it down. And I believe that was a feature that was um, not in the original Roller Coaster Tycoon, the first game. I believe you just had to kind of plonk it down somewhere and pray that it all kind of looks good where you put it. The, the, these farmers don't need, like, their lemon trees and whatnot. Just put a roller coaster there. Exactly. I mean, pretty soon they won't need it. We'll just be able to pay them off tenfold at this rate oh, and yeah. still have enough money for ourselves. Yeah, this is a this is a pretty cozy looking park right here. I wouldn't mind living near a theme park like this. Yeah, I mean the merry-go-round is not too loud. You know, everybody has a good time. It's in a farm as well, so it's away from um, most civilization. So I imagine the noise complaints would be kept at a relative minimum. Oh, it was a real shame that one year when people released crocodiles into the little uh, boating areas, and uh, then the tragedy came—the great tragedy. I think you might be thinking of Zoo Tycoon there. <laughs> <laughs> one for the future then, I guess. Uh, quite possibly. If I can get that one to work, that's something I'd like to cover. Although, there is a quote-unquote spiritual successor coming out, which is uh, Jurassic Park themed. Mm -hmm. So it's basically if you took Zoo Tycoon's dinosaur expansion and just made it its own singular game and put Jurassic Park theming in there as well. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, conveniently forgetting to put a chain link fence somewhere near the T-Rex enclosure. <laughs> it's always the way. It's always the way. Just uh, repairing the fence I broke whilst um, placing this thing down. Fence? Yeah, you know, gotta make sure that you are. Uh... Is that a friend fence, Mr. Volk, or is it just you speaking again? No, it's a uh, me speaking again. <laughs> But yeah, this is a nice cozy little roller coaster. Nothing too intense. Pretty fun. And it's one of those ones where you do multiple loops, so... I think people will be happy with that one. Not too intense. Pretty exciting. You'll make a few bob out of that, I reckon. Well, it's only the first level. I assume we're seeing more than one. No, no. I'm just figuring I do the one level and uh, show it through to the end, so I, you can kind of see how the park evolves over the full two-year cycle. Um, but I'm going to make some cuts here and there just to uh, keep things snappy. Thank you, thank you. I'm pretty sure we spoke about this in um, Theme Park itself, but um, was there a particular ride or roller coaster that you remember going in and thinking, wow, that is a big piece of beef, I love me some of that? Well, I wish you would, had phrased that less homoerotically, but um, no, no, roller coasters aren't my bag, baby. I have a fear of heights, very crippling, I prefer the waltzes, that's probably my favourite fairground ride, next to bumper cars. Well, my favourite, I believe, was the uh, bobsled roller coaster from Blackpool Pleasure Beach, to be precise, just because I'd never seen one like that before, and it was fun as hell. It was very unique. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Well, I think you need to go into a bit of detail, mate. What's that all about? Well, a bobsled roller coaster is, well, it's almost like the bobsleigh kind of run itself is on a track, and you're inside these uh, little sleds almost. It's almost like you're on an actual bobsled. It's really, really cool, but hmm. it's not quite on track, so you can kind of feel yourself going up and around the bends, and it gets pretty scary at times, but, you know, it's not, it's the right kind of scary. It's the right kind of scary that's still exciting, but you're not going to poop your pants. Ah, always a plus. We're going to build our first proper roller coaster now, but um, we need a bit of bob, but that's okay. Like most good management sim games, we get loans to access. So uh, we can just take out a little loan here, and uh, we'll be free to place the pre-designed coaster called Hedgehog, which is black and red. So um, 10 points if you can guess what I'm going to rename this to. <laughs> oh, sweet Jesus. Very apt, considering who got revealed to be playable in Forces recently. Oh yeah, that's right. Apparently a lot of people really dug that, so... Uh... Well, Good for them. The level design eh, could use some work, but uh, he looks cool. I'm excited. Yes, I am excited for forces. <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, Sonic's a little in your blood, I would expect by now. Oh yeah, I, I really need to get a proper blood transfusion one of these days. I keep wanting to go fast, but my body literally cannot keep up with the G-Force. Sounds to me like you just need new legs. Mm, yeah. If only everything in life were as simple as you put it, Volk. If only. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. There will be a lot less money problems, that's for damn sure. 
So, one thing about um, Roller Coaster Tycoon that uh, separates it from theme parks is that um, all of your rides and roller coasters are actually rated on a uh, on a scale. So, in theme park, it was kind of like if the ride was like poor excitement to excellent excitement. Here, it's all kind of done in numbers. So, um, a low excitement ride might only be like a 2.0 or something like that. Whereas a really exciting ride might be somewhere in the 8s or the 9s. But that is really, really hard to achieve without some godlike scenery or if the ride is put together in just the right manner. Because. Mm. It also rates you on other factors as well, like for G-forces, like your minimum and maximum speeds, the amount of inversions. It all comes together in such a way that you, you can't just put together a track willy-nilly and expect it to work. You kind of have to put the effort in to make it an actual functioning coaster that isn't going to snap your neck into the minute you go around a corner. Right, right. And uh, that's the one thing I really like about um, this as compared to Theme Park, because it actually feels like when you're putting the effort in to make something and it just works, it feels so much more satisfying than it ever did in the likes of a uh, theme park. Volk, Volk, what are you making here, my friend? Ah, I thought I figured I should show off how the um, roller coaster thing got made, but I want to make something relatively short but um, exciting. So what I'm doing is I'm making a roller coaster that sort of takes you up on a reverse incline and then drops you down back through the station and then have you go through a few inversions. Have another hill at the top, and then you go through the whole thing in reverse again. Oh my god. It's one of my favourite kind of rides to make, because it's something you can put together relatively quickly. And you can generally make a lot of money off them as well, because the ride time is so short. Yeah. So you can get punters through quickly, charge them like, three, four bucks, and just make a mint out of it. It's pretty damn great. So it's one of those coasters I like to make towards the uh, earlier stages of the game, which in a scenario like this, where you only have two years in order to actually make the thing work and to reach your objective, you want to be able to build roller coasters quickly. I gotta say, three to four dollars isn't bad to get on a roller coaster of um, this uh, style, gravitas, I should say, for lack of a better word, because uh, the last time I bothered to venture outside, uh, Lines were a very big thing, so um, I don't know what that has to do with price. I had a point, it's gone into the ether, but it's a nice roller coaster. You might want to finish it first, though. Well, it is finished, and it'll, you'll see exactly how it works as well. So I left this in there deliberately. Oh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Now you see how it goes down. Get worried for a second, though. No, don't worry, I wasn't making a death trap so that they fall off the end and explode. Although you can do that if um, you're into that sort of thing. There are many elaborate death traps you can make in this game. And that ends up being like a good portion of the fun for a lot of people. I mean, you've obviously heard of the legendary Mr. Bones Wild Ride and uh, placing people into a hole and kind of leaving them to starve or drowning your guests. <laughs> you know, if you're into that sort of thing, you've got that option there too. It's the Sonic, of course it is. Well, I figured if we had the shadow, it seemed only fair. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm making a fancy station as well, which I had to uh, put forward a little bit, just because uh, building these things can often take some time. But yeah, yeah. it kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with just some of the scenery options you have available. So you can make things have so much more life to them just by making a simple custom station platform. But if you really want to take it to the extreme, you can sort of make an entire ride that sort of has um, similar things throughout the entire thing, and that'll usually bump you up a couple of points in the excitement rating. But uh, if I can get back on that one again for just a moment, as well as excitement, you are rated on intensity and you're rated on nausea. And all your individual guests will have a different nausea tolerance and a different... Um, thrill-seeking value. So some people will love to just tackle those really intense rides, but uh, there are some people that won't go anywhere near that shit. So that's why you need to kind of strike the balance between the uh, the gentle stuff and the really, really thrilling stuff. And that's how you generally make the most money in the game, just by being able to balance it out nicely. Do they have a roller coaster for people who suffer from like major clinical anxiety? Like it's just a straight line of a single bump and then it just goes back to the start? <laughs> you could do that, although then again, those kind of roller coasters are probably more like the um, minecart one we built earlier, where it's kind of, it doesn't really have much in the way of inversions, like a couple of drops, a couple of uh, banking turns, 
that's the kind of uh, gentler roller coaster that uh, I would think when um, you're talking about things like that. But yeah, if you wanted to, you could literally just make a roller coaster which is just a single bump and then it goes all the way back around to the station again. It probably won't be very exciting, but you can do it. <laughs> I think I told you this in um, Theme Park again, but uh, uh, did you ever have those things that turned up in like your town center? It was just like a little installation. It had like vehicles on a track and it just rode around a couple of times. Like something your parents would stick you on for like a quid or something. Oh yeah, I think I was put on a couple of those way back in the day, but um, I have to admit I don't remember any specific ones on that one. <laughs> But I do remember actually being taken on one of those just in general. It was always fun getting on the motorbikes because uh, you weren't enclosed then. You were riding on top of a vehicle and you could really feel the drops and whatnot. Yeah, that's true, that's true. So people seem to really like Sonic. <laughs> Which is good because uh, I put a lot of effort into making that station and if it turned out to be crap then I feel like a right ass. I can't help but laugh that Sonic Forces is currently being criticised for level design and you just have a thing that basically goes... <laughs> it goes in one line and then reverses in the exact opposite direction. <laughs> well you know what, I just wanted to uh, capture it as best as I could. Oh, this man, he's witty, he's on the ball. And of course, as well as uh, off of your scenery and theming, you can also put down trees, which you know I like to put down me trees in theme park. And since this is a farm, I wanted to at least keep some greenery intact. So I, I thought maybe dip some around. I'm not going nearly as far as I usually do, which is uh, quite restraint. It's quite restraint uh, restrictive for me, especially. <laughs> you know me, I like to put down me trees. Uh, we don't want to turn it into Fangorn Forest, mate. You don't want to see Treebeard riding Splash Mountain or some shit. I think that would actually go down quite well. You can even use some of his friends to make the log flume carts. We, we needed a hobby after getting rid of Saruman. <laughs> so come aboard our log flume. <laughs> oh no, that's my granddad. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we come up with some really strange things sometimes, I swear to God. Oh uh, yeah. So what's next, mate? We must be coming to the end of uh, this particular theme park. Yeah, I think we've pretty much built all the things um, that we need to to meet the criteria. It's just a little bit of a waiting game and also part seeing what else we can research in this scenario and what else we can build. And uh, I wanted to give myself enough time to speak about everything I wanted to in this game. So I've still got a few minutes to do that. So uh, one thing about Theme Park is that you do have some uh, management criteria that you can make as well. So obviously you have to manage the uh, size of the buses, you have to make deals with your staff to stop them from going on strike. We're talking about Roller Coaster Tycoon here, right? No, this is in the uh, theme park, but in Roller Coaster Tycoon you don't have to worry about your staff going on strike uh, okay. and your and your food reserves running out. Basically all of that is taken care of for you, but instead you kind of have to manage the prices like of your park entrance if that's available, because sometimes you have a scenario where entrance to the park is free but the rides cost money or the rides are free but you pay an upfront sum to actually get into the park right, right. so you have to consider that as well as kind of making sure that you're charging fair prices but also you're squeezing the maximum amount of profit out of um, your rides so you've got that element in there which keeps pretty much intact with theme park but another thing you could do to kind of uh, ump your bump up your revenue is make advertising campaigns and that can give you huge influx of guests just by advertising the park itself a specific ride or handing out coupons for like a free burger for instance or a free ride on the merry-go-round for oh, instance nice so you got that as well there to consider so in a ways roller coaster tycoon does the management stuff a lot simpler than theme park like you don't have to worry about your food reserves running out as I said before so that kind of lets you maintain the focus on the park itself and for something where you can build your own roller coasters as insane as um wow what's the word I'm looking for basically you can make really insane stuff later on it's not quite as simple as you saw like get dropped off a thing go around a few loops and that is you can like make a whole ride that takes about two minutes to go through and kind of goes around the entire park if you wanted to oh no you'll never get me on one of these things Oh, I tried one of those before, and yeah, never again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would rather die. <laughs> did you Did you throw up afterwards, mate? 
No, but I felt very wobbly afterwards. Oh, well, you would, wouldn't you? Because you'd have been. Humans aren't designed to be shot up into the sky. No, especially not at 115 kilometers an hour. Gosh darn. Yeah, I, when I got to the ground, I just felt like I was still kind of floating upwards. Like, all of my organs got pushed up and I was feeling a lot floatier than I was used to. It was really weird. Yeah. And I was just like, no, no, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I, say, I can say I did it once and I don't have to do it again now. I just love the fact that the merry-go-round music is going around the background, so Jesse got the dodgems right next door going dun 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 it's that kind of drugs position I look for, you know, a really cool kind of, um, well, I guess it's, I, what's the difference between a carnival and a theme park? Well, a theme park, generally speaking, is a more permanent fixture, so that would be like your Orton Towers, your Chessington World of Adventures, and all that sort of thing. A carnival is just a smaller selection of rides that's constantly traveling around. Oh, so okay. it's not permanent, so it's just like a convoy of um, rides and snack stalls and game stalls and things like that. So, Goose Fair, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. Basically, if it's on the back of a lorry, it's a carnival. If it ain't on the back of a lorry, it's a theme park. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a theme park is a park that's themed, so there you go. Uh, not always, but it helps. Yes, of course, of course. So, uh, we've got about, ooh, I would say eight minutes left in this part, mate. Is there anything else you'd like to address? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously this is a absolutely fantastic game, but Rollercoaster Tycoon itself does have, like, one or two problems that I perhaps feel like could have been fixed or just not done with, and... The one that always got me was the scenarios. So obviously you got scenarios like, like this where you sort of like have a relatively wide open area, a few pieces of scenery here and there, but otherwise nothing to really worry about or circumnavigate. But the one thing I never really liked about Roller Coaster Tycoon scenarios is that it sometimes went a little bit too overboard. You had a lot of scenery in there and you kind of expect to either build with it or build around it and it's either a little overwhelming or it's incredibly restrictive because part of your brain thinks, all right, this is kind of nice looking scenery and I don't want to ruin it, but if I do that, I'm going to have so much limited space that I just don't know what I can do with it. And that's kind of where I liked Rollercoaster Tycoon 1 a little bit more because it was mostly flatland. I mean, there were a few scenarios that kind of broke away from that norm, but for the most part, you can kind of build things without having to worry about, you know, adjusting the hill height and removing bits and pieces because like adjusting the land and removing some bits of scenery does actually cost money so if you kind of wanted to go down that route you'd kind of run out of money before you actually started building the theme park so yeah, no. I kind of like the relatively clean slates that most of the RCT1 scenarios provided where you just kind of have a blank slate with a few bits and pieces here and there that aren't too troublesome to build around. Hmm. I'm just looking up the scores for a uh, roller coaster tycoon too and uh it, uh, it didn't do gangbusters. It uh, actually did fairly average. It has a Metacritic of 74 out of 100 at the time of uh, us recording this. Eurogamer gave it a 6 out of 10. Game Informer, 8.5 out of 10. GameSpot, 7.0 out of 10. Uh, Dan Adams of IGN gave Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 an 8 out of 10, praising the game for the addition of the scenario and ride editor, as well as worth in value. But a major criticism for the game at the time of its release was that the game engine and interface were almost identical to the first game, with minor improvements in graphics, such as more images for coaster cards, allowing for or, uh, smoother animations. That's cards, not uh, cards, by the way, or codes. Uh, Dana Jongward of Computer Gaming World suggested that the game needed consistent back buttons for the interface, would save a lot of time that spent closing and reopening windows, and wished that a shift from 2D to 3D would have been a great way to showcase these new coasters. Nevertheless, the game proved successful and attracted more people to the series, revitalizing the existing fan base. By the mid-2000s, Rollercoaster Tycoon 2 was the most successful game in the series. I mean, RCT1, I believe, uh, did much better in the ratings just in general because it was A, a new thing, and B, it was done so well that people couldn't help but give it 9s and 10s and things like that. But I do pretty much agree with what's been said there. There are some problems in that maybe they played it a bit too safe, but 
At the same time, I think what most people just wanted was more of the same, just with a few extra bells and whistles put in there, and uh, allowing you to account for customizing your own scenery and things like that. And obviously the scenario editor helps a lot as well, so you could just give yourself a nice little sandbox to play in if you so desired, or you could make your own interesting scenarios and share them online. Mm. So I really, really dug that. But, uh, yeah. For the most part, it is pretty much the same, and the menu stuff especially, I don't really notice it as much because I played this game so much that it's just kind of become second nature to me, but I can see where other people might have reservations about constantly having to exit out of something to go back into one menu, and maybe that's something that OpenRCT2 has fixed or will be in the process of fixing, but we'll have to see. Obviously, OpenRCT2 is still in development, so to speak, and they're still adding new features, so... It could do well in uh, helping enhance the great experience that it already is. Nice, nice. But yeah, in general, Roller Coaster Tycoon, incredible game. There is very little I can actually fault with it. It's just one of those games that I can always come back to even years and years later and still have a decent idea of what to do and I can just create whatever the hell I want. Whether it's just spending two hours on this really long, elaborate ride that I kind of had an idea in my head for, or whether that's just playing a quick scenario and just trying to see how efficiently and quickly I can build up this thriving park. This, it offers you pretty much everything that you'd want in a uh, simulator game. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the only thing it's really lacking is true depth, but as I mentioned before, I feel like the meat of the game is actually building up the park itself, so... Minimizing that while still giving you the illusion that you are going through steps to manage a park efficiently is was a, was ultimately the best way to go. Hmm. Illusion's good for the guests as well, because uh, what are they in the end but plebs riding life's great roller coaster, shelling out money and coming out the other side a little bit disheveled. <laughs> or pretty much on the verge of puking, but um, I think I've placed enough toilets and first aid kiosks around, so... <laughs> yeah. They should be safe, but I make no guarantees. That's what the handymen are for. <laughs> no, you should put the restroom on that space lift thing, so you go in, sit down on a toilet, you just get shut up and, uh, bada bing, you're already in the restroom. You can kind of do things like that with the, um, observatory. They have, like, a thing where you can make, like, an observation tower and then have a station at the top. So what you could do is you could build it up, have an exit up there, and then just have one toilet up there, and then they just go back down. And just make that your only toilet in the entire park. Oh, sweet. Basically just showing off my creation before we uh, get our victory fanfare, so to speak, just to show people what I have been able to make with the tools and such provided. Obviously we've got Shadow over there looking as menacing as it has since we built it. Mm. I like the double loop for the station platform thing especially, I think that's a nice touch. Just barely scraping the other piece of the track. Of course, there are some minor clipping issues, but we'll ignore that. The guests are okay. It's not exploding. <laughs> That's the important thing. Let's hope the safety inspector doesn't come by. Does it, is that a thing, by the way, just before we conclude this episode? Uh, no, but you do get awards, so you can get awarded on your cleanliness, your safety of your rides, the quantity of your rides, and things like that, but you don't get the likes of Sir Reginald Crumbly from Theme Hospital daunting around, like, inspecting every last nook and cranny of, uh, your establishment. Jesus, that fucking roller coaster right in front of us there with the, uh, almost waltzer-like cars. <laughs> Jesus, no. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> you mean you don't like being spun around in your car whilst you're being spun around on the track? <laughs> That's alright, we got the log flume right there. So um, if you want something a bit more gentler, that'll uh, cruise you along nicely. Nice little touch there when you do get your victory is that all the guests applaud you and uh, release their balloons. And if you want to, you can go around popping each of those balloons if you want to. That's always a fun little post-game thing to do. But after you complete a level, you can carry on at your leisure. So it's not necessarily the end if you don't want it to be. But there you go, that's Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. Wonderful. Okay guys, come back next upload day for another episode of Spot on PC. Bye bye. <laughs>